finally, 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 Tanner Hudson's back. And I think this is probably the best move we could have made because we have Gentry and Tanner Hudson on the practice squad. And let's be honest, our tight end group is not working out. So you have one of two options. Either run five wide receivers every single play and kind of zone out the tight end position because let's be honest, outside of Drew Sample, who actually had some really good blocks against the 49ers and saved us on a couple of plays, Wilcox and Irv Smith are pretty much useless. Like, Irv Smith, somewhat useful last game when he had a couple catches, he fumbled the ball, but at least he contributed. Mitchell Wilcox has been doing nothing. So, if Wilcox is pretty much at a point where he's not doing anything, then why waste his spot on the roster and have someone in there who isn't really going to contribute, right? So, bringing Tanner Hudson in at least brings in a concept of, okay, now we have, you know, somebody on that roster who can go out there and catch the football and help this vertical passing game and let us do different packages, right? So, I love the fact that they're bringing back Tanner Hudson. Again, like I said, there's two guys they have on this, you know, press squad tight end-wise. They have Gentry from the Steelers. And they have Hudson. So they have two different options here. Now, of course, they're looking toward the press squad, not, you know, elsewhere, because they want the ability to kind of go from active roster to press squad, active roster, press squad, back and forth, and kind of have that luxury of going, you know, okay, well, he's going to be on the roster, he's not on the roster, he's on the roster, he's not on the roster. So that's kind of the, what that perspective is. Now, of course, Tanner Hudson, so far, you know, he hasn't been looking amazing, for a short time, he, we've had him out there, you know, for us. Um, I th was it week four? Week three and week four when we had no Irv Smith and we had Tanner Hudson. But at the same time, <laughs> ironically enough, you know, that was also the time where offense was kind of struggling. But even with the offense struggling, he still looked more productive than Irv Smith. He still did. So what gives us the best chance to win? What gives us the best chance to open up this offense? You could say, well... Go out there and sign a new tight end. Go out there and you're going to trade for somebody. But at the end of the day, that's not what they want to do. They don't want to go out there and get somebody else because they have faith in the guys they have. There's a reason why two tight ends are on this practice squad. Or, um, Tanner Hudson and, of course, what's his name? Gentry. It's because they have faith that those guys can eventually be called up if we need them to, to go out there and play good football for us. So... I'm very excited about this because what this shows us is, again, another factor of this offense evolving, right? Instead of us just being content with what's going on, content with having, you know, okay, our roster is kind of tight end-wise. We're just not going to really, you know, we're not going to really be, you know, getting better there. This is actually us trying to get better at the tight end position. Now, let's be honest because a lot of you guys pointed this out down below and it's very true. We don't really utilize the tight end as much as other teams do, okay? We're not Baltimore here. We use the tight end, but very sparsely. You look at Hayden Hurst one year with us, he, we didn't want really to utilize him that much. We kind of did a little bit, but it wasn't like to a point where, you know, you're going to go out there and try to get George Kittle as your tight end moving forward, right? Now, here's how I kind of look at it, right? Because the tight end for us, I feel like a lot of times are blocking scenarios, right? We have Drew Sample out there, Mitchell Wilcox out there. We have blocking. If we do utilize the tight end in a vertical threat game, it's more or less like a wide receiver we're utilizing. We're not utilizing as a pure, strict tight end. We're utilizing him more like a receiver. This is why a lot of people haven't made the argument why not just put Yoshio there, uh, out there in that position? The only thing I think that the reason why they don't do that is because just in case they want to block and run the ball, they want a guy out there who can do that. Irv Smith, while I have trashed him many times for his receiving problems, you go back to week one and week two, and this guy was blocking amazingly. Like, he was doing really good blocks and actually getting the edge on a lot of players. Even in those rough games, he was still playing pretty good in the blocking game. While he was piss poor when it comes to the receiving game, he has been actually pretty nice in the blocking game, which is actually surprising because that's not his specialty slash his expertise. He is not a blocker, but yet he was going out there and actually blocking very, very well in certain scenarios. And that's saying more than players like, um, actually, no, I'm not even going to trash anybody else because I just remembered the guy I was just about to trash was Irv Smith 
Sunday when he missed the block that was wide open block. But nonetheless, though, he has been utilizing the blocking game. And that's why they're not using five receivers out there with Yoshi. Because Yoshi cannot block as well as Irv Smith can. I know Irv Smith isn't that much of a blocker. But he's better than Yoshi is at blocking. Okay, Yoshi's an outside receiver. He's a go get him type of guy. So that's the whole thing with tight ends. Okay, let's talk about the other one. We did sign a new free agent off free agency to our practice squad. And that player was, of course, Clayton Johnson. Uh, Clayton Johnson was a fourth-year player out of Baylor University, was acquired by waivers by Cincinnati midway through the 2021 season. He played in 23 regular season snaps, one start for the Bengals from 2021-2022, including 11 defensive tackles and 14 special team tackles, and Johnson became a free agent in March. So here's why we picked him up. He's someone who knows the system. He's someone we could pick up and kind of plug and play. And let's be honest, Devin Harper has not been working out. If we're being honest here, Devin Harper was a guy we picked up because Akeem Davis Gaither was hurt and wasn't 100% and couldn't play. So we picked up Devin Harper from the Cowboys press squad and we said, okay, you know what? He looks okay for the, for the Cowboys. The Cowboys were actually about to pick him back up to their active roster. So we said, no, 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 we're going to play Mr. Steal Your Girl. We came in, grabbed the guy, put him on our squad. We thought he could plug and play and be fine. First week, guy gets 15-yard unsportsmanlike like conduct on a punt. Since then, he hasn't really been anything special. So this is kind of, you bring someone back, you know, who... Already has been on your team before. Already knows your system before, right? He already knows Lou, right? Again, he's been here in 2022. 2021, 2022. So he knows your system in the past. And now you're bringing him back because, again, obviously he's on the active roster, but he is on the press squad. And we've seen many times how many times Cincinnati activates a guy from the press squad to that. You know, so what's going to happen probably is you have a whole week of practice. You have these guys out there, Clayton Johnson, and you know he's obviously probably not ready to go right now. He just signed with the press squad. But what they're going to do is by Saturday, whoever looks better, Devin Harper or Clayton Johnson, is going to be on the active roster and going <clears> to <throat> be playing on. <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday night football versus the Bills. <clears throat> so that's kind of how I see this scenario panning out. And it makes sense. Again, you're trying to make your roster better every single chance you get. And at the end of the day, if Devin Harper, which they have given him, in my opinion, way too much opportunities over the last couple of weeks, this is that scenario of, you know what? He's not working out. We want to see if Clayton Johnson, a guy who's been in a loose system before, who knows what he's doing, what can he do for us? Can he come in and play better than Devin Harper? And I'll be honest with you right, with you right now. Devin Harper is not, like, that's that level of play better than Devin Harper is, like, this and this. Like, you, you, he's starting here, Clayton Johnson. This is Devin Harper. So, that is that. It's going to be an interesting scenario to see if he does not start this upcoming weekend. And he might not because he has been a free agent since March. Um, I'm sure he's still in football shape and still good there. But he hasn't been, you know really out there playing every single second, pressing every single second like we would want him to. Uh, but he knows the system. So it's the kind of guy like kind of like AJ McCarron, when he comes in, he's familiar with how things operate. This is not a guy who's coming into a, you know, a completely blank canvas here. This is a guy who knows what he's doing. He knows what we're about. And he comes in and he's able to play the high level. So tell me down below your thoughts and opinions, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.